While the majority of recreational and professional divers no longer use watches as tools, there's something romantically interesting about knowing that if you ever did decide to test a watch and put it through its paces, it could handle it. With that in mind, in this video, what I wanted to do is look at some of the top professional dive watches that would be able to truly handle these different conditions. So just so we're all on the same page, let's first examine the idea of what it means to be a professional diver, as well as the requirements for being a professional dive watch. As you guys probably know, and based on looking at me right now, I'm not exactly a diver myself. In fact, it's rare for me to even jump in any body of water that's not a pool. So I asked my colleague, Ben, he's one of our team members and a former commercial diver for insights in in this arena and we put together this list in tandem. Now to start, outside of dive masters and scuba instructors, the majority of divers being paid to dive on a regular basis actually aren't scuba divers, which is to say divers wearing fins, a mask, and a tank on their back holding their breathing gas. There are exceptions, but most divers making a living wage to dive are commercial divers who have undertaken specialized training to utilize a diving helmet that is rigidly connected to the surface with an umbilical that brings breathing gas and other amenities from the surface. And although many collectors probably love picturing the image of a diver utilizing their Seiko prospects as a vital piece of kit in these sometimes dangerous environments, we have to crush some dreams here. As since the advent of the diving computer in the early 1980s that calculates essentially everything a diver needs to know in real time, scuba divers are seldom going to wear watches to track their underwater timing, and commercial divers have all of their timing coordinated by supervisors on the surface. The former life-saving importance of watches for divers simply no longer exists, especially for the commercial diving community who are the most deserving of the professional diver title. Having said all of this, the standards like ISO 6425 still exist and lay out incredible specific sets of requirements to be met in order to be called an official diver's watch with the divers on the dial. And I wouldn't say only ISO 6425 certified watches should be considered as pro divers because legends like the Rolex Submariner and Omega Seamaster Diver 300 lack this certification. Key aspects of a solid dive watch should in general include water resistance, obviously, but also things like legibility, loom, anti-magnetic properties, properties, shock and temperature resistance, a solid strap and bracelet option that work with different diving suits, and general robustness. These aspects can be found in dive watches in a wide range across the industry at a variety of price points. And for the purposes of this video, we'll look at both watches that are ISO compliant and watches that we think just fit the purpose of being a professional dive watch. Again, this list was put together with Ben and myself. So if you do have some criticisms for this uh, list, I would just direct them all at Ben. He has a great uh, Instagram account too, in addition to where he talks about about dive watches all the time. So if you like that stuff, wanna get nerdy, uh, we'll link to that in the description down below as well. Also, before we jump into this video, if you want a good jumping off point and want to shop some different dive watches, really good prices, wide range, uh, we have a full curated collection on our website. I'll link it in the description down below. This was curated by myself and Ben. So if you're actually wanting to look at some dive watches approved by a professional diver, cool list to check out be in the description down below. So to begin here, we'll go in ascending price and we'll start with a brand known as Scurfa with their Diver One in titanium. So in terms of just this watch, I mean, you look at it on paper, it looks pretty solid. 40 millimeters in diameter, wearable lug to lug, reasonable thickness, 500 meters of water resistance with an actually functioning helium escape valve, which again is not going to be used by the vast majority of divers out there. So that is typically not a needed thing and totally overblown in terms of how the brands position it. But the special thing about this brand is it was actually started by a diver. And not just any diver, a commercial saturation diver. His name is Paul Skurfield. Paul is a major watch enthusiast. He knows what watch enthusiasts want. So he basically just wanted to create a cool dive watch at a pretty reasonable price that also could handle the taxing conditions of dive actual environments, which a guy like him would know specifically. So that's really what you're getting here. I remember trying this on, this was in our list of micros last year that I thought were really solid, but you're talking about a titanium case, dive watch, robust, really solid water resistance. It kind of just checks off the boxes and it's around $200. So pretty cool brand, recommend checking them out when you're talking about professional divers and professional dive watches, makes sense to be in a list like this. Moving right along, and I'm just going to go through some of these different models, but I'm going to mention Seiko. And the reality is Seiko is going to be probably the go-to along with Citizen for professional diving watches at more attainable prices. We'll start with the Turtle family. We can reference something like the SRP E93. This in many ways is the successor to something like the SKX in terms of professional specifications and case design. 
And it's a watch that is going to truly be a watch made for these taxing environments underwater. Although that is typically not what many people nowadays are going to be wearing them for, but they absolutely can do the job, no questions asked. ISO compliant dive watch, 45 millimeters in diameter, a lug to lug that's way more compact. These wear like 42 millimeter watches on wrist, 200 meters of water resistance, 4R36 movement on the inside, so it's no more 7S26. You don't have to worry about that. It does wear larger than the SKX, but a beloved model by both enthusiasts and divers alike. Another one that we'll throw in here, and this is a watch that is also ISO 6425 certified, a true dive watch, and a little bit different, and this is the Seiko Arnie, the SNJ025. Of course, it's not gonna be for everybody. It has this plastic shroud along the outside, the wired lugs, the analog digital display, but do not sleep on this movement. It's a very cool movement. If you've not seen my video reviewing this watch, I'd recommend it. Uh, very cool time setting and how it works. There's a lot to like here. But beyond that, the watch is absolutely worthy of the job of diving. Larger circular case, but don't be too afraid about the Seiko Arnie. This is one of these watches that you see Arnold Schwarzenegger wearing it. You see the specs on the you know piece of paper or online. And you're like, oh, I don't know if I can pull this off. It doesn't look that crazy, even on my wrist. And I think we can just show something of this thing on my wrist. And I think it actually looks kind of cool. I don't think it looks off at all. Uh, 200 meters of water resistance, class leading loom, not necessarily my style of watch, but still there's a lot to like with the Arnie. And I'm only gonna put one other Seiko watch on here because we'll be here all day just talking about Seiko. You could just extend it up uh, all the way to the higher end, like Marine Masters and things like that. But we're gonna cut it off here with the Samurai Collection, something like the SRP E37. You really can't go wrong with this collection. I would say these wear uh, similar to the Turtle. They just have more of an angular case architecture. It is more compact also across the wrist in my opinion. So it's a little bit different. I would recommend trying these on to get a feel, but in general, I would say this is the more modern type of feeling uh, Seiko prospects in comparison to the Turtle. The Turtle is more of that 1970s inspired case design that has been a part of the brand for quite some while. Uh, Samurai is more of a contemporary approach, wears much smaller, 200 meters of water resistance, class leading loom, and a 4R35 movement on the inside. Now Seiko gets a lot of love when it comes to both collectors and divers, but one thing that is lost on many is just how much credibility Citizen has in the diving arena among actual professional divers. It is about neck and neck in terms of Seiko and Citizen. They are both beloved by divers, but I do think when the enthusiast community, we just give all the love to Seiko, which, you know, understood, I get it, but Citizen certainly deserves more love when you're talking about their ProMaster collection. Here we'll start with the ProMaster Diver Automatic. The original Fugu dates back to 1989. Citizen has now been shifting more of the focus back to these watches and just offering more automatic mechanical uh, powered watches across the board, which I think is great news for enthusiasts that want to get more invested in the brand. They have a very similar approach to the Samurai. It has like this imposing nature in terms of like the indices and the design style. Uh, it makes more of a statement, variety of different dial colors and colorways to choose from. Similar effect here with wearing much smaller than the case size will indicate. I'd say these wear like a 42 on wrist, 200 meters of water resistance, ISO certified dive watch, and loom that is pretty much just as good as what Seiko is bringing forth with their dive watches. And I also will mention you do have EcoDrive models that you could go for as well. And I think the EcoDrive technology with a dive watch is a great combination for just a carefree type of experience where you don't have to worry about you know winding the watch. It's just set it and forget it at its finest. Next we have the Citizen EcoDrive EcoZilla. This is a watch that is going to again very aggressive. This is not going to be your entry level, you know, you know, dressed in a desk diver that you're gonna wear to the office or with a suit. This is all about the business. 48 millimeters rounded case, not the normal and conventional case in terms of what it's going for. 300 meters of water resistance, reliable movement on the inside. If the Fugu isn't aggressive enough for you, this is where you go next. And then jumping off that even further, you wanna get really into the core diving stuff from Citizen, you then look at the Aqualand. ProMaster Diver. So this is a watch that is going to wear larger in its case size, certainly not to the full extent of the diameter, but still quite large. Now the Aqualand collection debuted in 1985 and has become a mainstay thanks to the legible analog digital displays and accurate integrated depth gauges, which provide excellent backup data for say when your diving computer ever did, uh, God forbid, have any issues. The Aqualand BN2039 combines a color coordinated analog display with separate 
hands for time telling and depth gauge, along with EcoDrive charging capabilities and a surprising well thought out package. Now Tissot with the Seastar 1000 is not necessarily a professional dive watch in terms of its approach. It's more of a kind of desk diver in its styling and design. It isn't going that extra mile and making sure it's reaching that professional spec. Very solid watch, very good across the board, uh, but not going to be geared maybe for a true diver. The Professional 2000 is going to be another story. This is an ISO compliant dive watch. You're also looking at a 46 millimeter case, which is gonna be larger, but the Loomis Phenomenal wave dial that almost kind of evokes some Seamaster Diver 300 and its approach. 80 hour power reserve movement, helium escape valve, which again, not needed, but still, if you're talking about it's all the bells and whistles, sure, it's nice to see. And water resistance of 600 meters. One other brand to throw in the similar price range here is the Mito Ocean Star 200C. This is their standard contemporary dive watch with modern spec, 42 and a half millimeter diameter, 12.25 millimeters in thickness, so a bit more refined than some of the other options on this list so far. Pretty compact lug to lug, so gonna wear like a 40 and a half to a 41 on wrist, 200 meters of water resistance, and the Eta C07.621, so a little bit of a higher grade here of those C07 movements with an 80 hour power reserve and sapphire crystal on top with some good anti-reflective coating uh, to go along with it. Now, another brand with some major diving cred that's not talked about a lot is Certina. Here we're gonna be looking at the DS Super PH500M. So if you're not familiar with Certina, they're not as well known in the United States as other places around the world. They're actually the number one selling like watch brand or one of the best selling watch brands in the Nordic countries. So certain parts of Europe, Certina is a powerhouse, but in places like the United States and other parts of the world, maybe not as familiar, but it's a cool brand to investigate a little bit further. Now this watch down the board just comes with some really solid specs, 500 meters of water resistance, solid loom, 80 hour power reserve movements. So you're seeing a very similar movement here to other Swatch Group brands. This is a Swatch Group uh, company. Uh, but Certina, in terms of its fans, a lot in the diving environment. Now, Certina supplied watches for the Tech Type 1 project in 1969, where a team of scientists and divers spent two months in an underwater laboratory, and is also known for having been the issue watch for some lucky Royal Australian Navy divers in the 1970s. So Certina certainly has a lot of credibility. This is like their true professional dive watch with their colors and what they're going for here. Then you also have their DS Action divers, which in addition are going to offer for up ISO compliance. Just a pretty cool brand and great diving history to go along with it. Now, perhaps the last real military issued analog dive watch, here we have the Marathon GSAR, the Government Search and Rescue. Marathon is a Canadian based brand that makes their watches in Switzerland, but they're really known for their military produced timepieces. They've been making watches for armed forces, uh, specifically the Allied forces in 1941, and have been producing military watches pretty much ever since. The G-Star Diver format dates back to 2001, designed for use by the Canadian Air Force search and rescue technicians. It's built like a tank, has the use of tritium, which is especially effective in complete darkness, which might be effective in say a case like diving. It also has it's essentially like trademark deeply inset dial within the case, which is very interesting in terms of uh, being recognizable compared to other brands. You have the Arctic versions as well as the traditional black. And the other thing they do really well is they have different case sizes for pretty much any size wrist. You could go for the MSAR, which is the medium search and rescue, which is not really a medium, it's very small. The GSAR is probably going to be the most mass appealing. It's 41 millimeters, but it does not wear to that size. It's actually on the case level. If you don't count the bezel on the outside, it's gonna be closer to 39 millimeters. So I'd say it splits the difference wearing like a 40 millimeter watch. When you're talking about dive watches, I think you have to mention the Doxa Sub 300T. This is the more professional dive watch produced by Doxa. Doxa is a brand that that is known for implementing colorful dials. They were testing out different dials in a Swiss lake, I believe it was uh, Lake Neuchâtel in Switzerland, and they were testing out what had the best visibility underwater. The orange professional was the one that won out. It had the best visibility in these murky environments, and that's what they went with. The 300T is the brand's modern pro diver offering a crazy water resistance and a helium escape valve. And I have a full video on this if you do want to just dive a little bit deeper into this, no pun intended. And also, if you're asking 
asking whether or not these are really legit and should I look into this brand any further. I mean, Jacques Cousteau had his crew members and he personally wore one. You had Clive Cussler with his Dirk Pitt novels uh, as being a watch that was featured. So there is a lot of just diver affiliation with this brand and a lot to like if you are interested in the world of aquatic uh, exploration. So now at this point, this is where we'll make a bit of a jump to the world of more luxuriously positioned watches compared to the conventional dive watches. And while that might make a bit less sense in this video compared to some others, it's important to note that even among divers, there is a desire to have a luxury brand on the wrist as it can serve as a status symbol among peers. In fact, certain divers, especially saturation divers, are making as much as $2,000 a day and want something that they can buy just like the rest of us. And while these are more expensive, each of these watches are still suited for underwater utility. First, we have the Longines Hydro Conquest. These come in a variety of different case sizes. Here, one thing that I think is special is 300 meters of water resistance, very robust crown system in terms of how it is positioned, sapphire crystal, variety of dial colors to choose from, and the automatic L888 caliber from Longines. I was at Longines, I saw them assembling these movements in-house within their facility. They could probably get away with calling these as in-house. They're just sourcing specific little parts from ETA, but they're doing the assembly, doing the work on site of these movements. Uh, and Etta is also a Swatch Group company. So I think we have to give more respect to Longines and what they're able to produce at the prices they're able to produce it. 72 hour power reserve, really giving that entry door to luxury experience. Next we have the Zin U50. And the U50 is the smaller version of the U1, very Germanic minimal design style, stark markers in its approach, but I, I think these watches look sick. I, I really enjoy the U50, and I have a full video reviewing one of the watches. Uh, you can go for the SDR versions, you uh, can get tegmented options with on the Vickers hardness scale. It's like six times the hardness of stainless steel, so really crazy scratch resistant, and in an underwater environment when you're dealing with all these taxing conditions, uh, that's always nice to have. Again, being smaller than the conventional U1, 41 millimeters. I would say it wears much smaller than that. I would say it wears like a 39 and a half to 40 millimeter, 500 meters of water resistance and an SW300. These are also going to be of a higher grade and going to be regulated by Zen. And if there's one brand that does not mess around with regulation, it is in every Zen watch I've ever owned and really have come into contact with was usually running between plus or minus five seconds a day. They're never going to say that, but that's just something that I've experienced uh, from handling many of their watches. Next, we have the Oris Aquis, the Caliber 400. This is the best-selling line for Oris, the Aquis family. A lot to like, refined, contemporary. I think in many ways, the Aquis is one of these watches that helps set the standard for what a dive watch should be in this price range. Uh, along with something like the Tudor Black Bay, I think it really is that solid of a dive watch. You also could, of course, mention the Salita options, which is gonna open up to a wide array of different dial variations in front of you. All of them do wear, I would say, about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half smaller, so 41 and a half, let's say it wears like a 40. 39 and a half wears like a 38. Uh, 43 and a half, where's like a 42. So that's really how I've been able to break down the Aquas. Then you also have the Caliber 400 on the inside. It's, it's kind of strange because of how much kudos we give to certain brands when it comes to producing like a manufacturer kind of bespoke movement. But then you have something like the Caliber 400 where I don't think people you know, stress enough how cool this movement is. Yes, it's finished to a utilitarian level, but it still looks great. Uh, you're getting five days of power reserve, pretty solid range of deviation, at least Oris is quoting outside of the box. At $3,000, there's really only one other movement that can compete with it on power reserve, and that is the Baumatic movement from Baum and Mercier. So pretty select company in terms of where it's sitting. And the Aquas, again, somewhat sets the standard in terms of this price range on what a dive watch should be. Now, Tudor did not hold back when it came to branding this watch with its diving connection, but does that still dispute the fact that it is a professional dive watch? And the answer is no, because it is. And that is the Tudor Pelagos Fix. NASA is to Omega what the Marine Nationale is to Tudor. They love mentioning it, and it is still very cool. They have this history that they can really just rely on and, of course, really be proud of. Uh, the Pelagos is, in many ways, as I've mentioned in the past, the modern interpretation of something like a vintage Tudor sub. This is the watch that I think 1970s Tudor would make if they could have the flexibility to spread their wings and have modern specs and approaches. This watch is made famous because of its fixed lugs, which are going to have a slide-through strap configuration. The rubber strap is 
phenomenal on these. I love how they were able to make it thin so it doesn't add to the wear and still feel, you know, give you the upside of what you would want from a rubber strap. 200 meters of water resistance, really solid loom, MT caliber on the inside with that 70 hour power reserve, COSC certified movement, bit more of an acquired taste. But now that we have the 39 millimeter Pelagos to go along with it, I think it now has carved out a really unique niche within the broader collection of Tudor. Now you knew this watch was gonna be on here. This is the Omega Seamaster Diver 300. You could also mention something like the Planet Ocean, which certainly can be here as well. Uh, Omega, they do make a professional dive watch for across the board. These watches, and you look at something like the Ultra Deep also as an example, like they are not afraid of really putting their watches and you know really testing the limit. Is it practical for 99.9999999, I can keep going with those nines, uh, percent of us? No, but it still is cool to know that they're pushing that forward. You have the Bond affiliation, 8800 movement on the inside, Metas certified, uh, 42 millimeter case, 300 meters of water resistance, great anti a reflective coating, phenomenal loom, also getting two different colors of luminescent material on these watches, which help with orientation and position, as I would think especially in diving environments. Helium escape valve, you love it or you hate it, but it's part of the design DNA of this model family. Now we have to mention the Rolex Submariner. Rolex Submariner date reference 126610LN. The Submariner has just become a fixture in the world of dive watches since its creation in the 1950s. I would say now it's deviated from its dive watch heritage quite a bit in terms of how it's positioned, how it's worn by most users, but that's to be expected of any Rolex watch nowadays. Fit and finish that really sets the standard in the price range. This watch is simply timeless. And even if you're someone that's so sick and tired of the Submariner, you've seen it so many times, Honestly, if there's one person that can complain on the planet about seeing the Samaritan too many times, it's probably myself uh, doing what I do. You still have to give it its kudos. It is an absolute icon, the most iconic watch really ever created. Also, you have to, of course, mention the Sea Dweller as well as an honorable mention here if you want even more of that dive watch pedigree and uh, ability to handle these taxing environments. And then finally, we have the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms, really the dive watch, the first dive watch and I don't think it's enough credit in terms of you know, having that title. The 50 Fathoms is the watch that pretty much almost every other dive watch needs to pay tribute. The original 50 Fathoms was produced at mass scale in 1953, uh, but Jean-Jacques Pfister, he was the CEO of Blanc Pond from 1950 to 1980. He was also an avid diver and he was having issues timing his dives off the coast of France and wanted a cool way to do it and probably impress his friends in the process. So in the early 1950s, he started to work on developing what would later become the 50 Fathoms. And in 1952, he had a working prototype and wore it on one of his diving trips with his friend, Rene Paul Jeanneret, who was the commercial director for Rolex at the time. Although you can't insinuate completely what happened there, but I think it's safe to say that without the 50 Fathoms, there probably wouldn't be uh, the boom of dive watches uh, the year later in 1953. Blanc Pond, when they nail it, they're making the Rolls Royce of dive watches. And also, of course, incredible credibility when you're dealing with their history and what they were able to do for the just art of creating a dive watch. But all right, guys, that's my list here looking at some professional dive watches. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. That's a great indication for me and also YouTube that you liked the video and more people should watch it. Really would appreciate that. I don't just say that, it does help out the channel. Definitely subscribe, hit the bell icon so you know when I release new content. Also definitely check out teddybaldesser.com. Teddybaldesser.com is a full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.